What are museums about? Stories. They're about stories and people and places and things and creatures and all of the stuff that make up our lives. Museums tell us who we are, some part of who we are. That's what museums are for. Museums are about, about the human condition. Museums are about life. Museums are about learning. Museums are about expanding your perception of life around you. Personally, I think they're my temple. You know, they're where I want to go to either have a meditative experience or a thought-provoking experience or um, uh, learn something completely new about the world that I didn't know about before. I think museums are more about learning and education and the so what factor. Why is this relevant to my life today? Museums are, exist to serve the public, to serve communities. Museums are about wonder, um, they're about education, they're about fun, they are universities for the general public. I think, I think we're starting to understand, I hope we're starting to understand as a society that we kind of need to know where we've been. I liken it to walking across a huge room and you've never been in the room and there's no windows in the room and you get halfway across it and all of a sudden the lights go out. Well, the only way that you're going to know where you're getting is by knowing where you've been and remembering where you've been and then you can remember how to get to the future. In 1964, Lewis C. Jones, who was then the director of the New York State Historical Association, had this wonderful idea to start a museum studies program. Um, he had a couple of reasons. He wanted to keep the staff at the New York State Historical Association busy during the winter, and he knew that there was no place in the country that was training people to work in history museums. So that was the bold vision in 1964, and it's continued. This is our 50th anniversary, and we're very excited about that. I had sworn after I left my undergrad experience that I was never going back to school, and yet here I was. I had this great passion for working in museums and knew I needed to come here, and knew a lot of alums who said I should. People are always astonished when I say I did my graduate work in Cooperstown. They say, what university is there? I say, well, University of Many Museums. Uh, and it gives us an opportunity to, you know, to have a hands-on experience in the museums. And that sets the program apart in a lot of ways. The unique aspect of the Cooperstown Graduate Program is that it's a partnership between a university and a historical association. We create a museum laboratory for them. Uh, we really put them through their paces, uh, but uh, they, they come through and do in incredible things out in the field after they leave us. One of the things we try to do here is create practical application of the things that are learned in class. Cooperstown is this really hands-on place where you don't just get learning in books, but you get to experiment, you get to try things. Many people who have jobs like mine teach solely from slides. This is a this, that is a that. And in my classes, we actually get to use the collections of the New York State Historical Association and the Farmers Museum to use our teaching collection here at CEP and really to engage with objects, not just visually, but using tactile senses. I've taught college classes before and I, I'm done teaching 100 students, 200 students. I remember the day I walked in to teach a, a, a biology course in genetics and there were 300 students in the class. I didn't get to know a single one of them. Whereas in a class here, there's, there's 17 students in an entire class. In, in, in like the 2013 class, there was only 15, 17 students. I know every single one of those students. Every single one of those students has been in my office to ask me questions. Every single one of the faculty has a vested interest in every single student. There was not a single day for the first 15 years of my career where I wasn't thinking back to something that I had learned here, some example that I had been given. Well, I like to say that so many great things in my life and so many great memories that I now have came to me as a result of my time in the graduate program. CGP helped me to take what I'd experienced in visiting museums and to understand what that meant in translating the effectiveness of museums to other people. I would say to anyone thinking about coming here, you're going to leave here immediately able to go into a career and an organization and make a difference, make an immediate impact. 
um, you don't have the same learning curve that everyone else has, has, has coming out of a purely academic program. I think it, it helped instill confidence in me that I, I can actually put into practice the things that um, I feel strongly about and the things that we discuss at school and that you can do it if, if you work hard enough for it and you prioritize it in your institutional values and I feel really fortunate that I've been able to bring what I learned at CGP into my work. One of the most important things that the Cooperstown Graduate Program has is this terrific network of alumni all over the country and indeed all over the world. There are people I met 40 years ago when I was a student here in the class of 1975 that I still rely on for information but more importantly who are great friends, um, partners in this this life that we all believe in. Having a core group of people who are so committed to it and being able to interact with them in a special way because we all have the common bond of being CGP alumni um, has been truly special and, and a great contributor to my career. You know, we're a big family, but a family that nurtures each other and s celebrates in each other's accomplishments. I have many friends who I still keep in touch with, colleagues and even professors that I will reach back to for advice uh, when it comes to addressing a certain problem. I look forward to just pouring back and investing in the program, not just because of my experiences and because of what I've gotten out of it, but because of the relationships that I've developed. And yeah, it's just really been wonderful to have that connection, to know that you have that connection to if you need anything from anyone else that you can just ask and be like, oh, I went to CGP, you went to CGP, you will help me and I will help you. And even when I haven't seen people for a long time, it's just like I'd seen them yesterday anyway. And that incredible network of colleagues that you get here, people that I'd never met before in my life, uh, we all have this common ground of Cooperstown, which is large enough to have a really cogent network and yet not so big a network that you feel like you don't all belong to a pretty cool and exclusive club. The program as it is 50 years after its founding is very different from the program that Lou Jones and Bruce Buckley and um, all of the other founders started back in 1964. It's a very different program because the program has continued to adapt and to change based on the way that museums um, and the world have changed and adapted. CGP has uh, what is known as the Institute for Cultural Entrepreneurship, which is a mid-career, uh, uh, a week-long seminar to help folks learn how to be more entrepreneurial and look at their challenges in different ways to hopefully come up with creative solutions to funding and other needs that they may have. Without the uh, creativity that entrepreneurship brings. We can't move our institutions forward. We must have entrepreneurship. We must have creativity. We must present our institutions for the next generation of our museums, our collections, our communities. We gotta keep pushing ourselves. And I think CGP really pushed me to think differently about how I view objects and museums and what they mean to their communities. We do have to constantly rethink what we need to do, but ultimately a museum, a historical society, a historic house museum, we all do have a story to tell and it's how valuable we make ourselves to the community in the process um, that helps us move the field forward. As we see the decline in history museum participation since the bicentennial, Anybody who's realistic recognizes that we've got to do something different, um, that we have to find a way to appeal to contemporary audiences, um, and we have to find a way to appeal to diverse audiences. Everyone should feel welcome and everyone should feel represented and everyone should feel that they can come to, um, to a museum. And museums have not been as responsive to the needs of their communities as they should be. We have to cultivate diversity in the field. We have a responsibility to reach out to schools, to reach out not just to colleges and universities, but to reach out to high school and junior high school students and expose them to this as an option. It's truly issuing the invitation and opening the door through public programs, through the diversity of your staff, 
to the diversity of your board, to the diversity of your membership. You have to show that it's a sincere invitation. Our commitment to diversity um, is, very, is very exciting because we're really um, bringing in a variety of students and those students from different backgrounds really enrich the conversation in our classes and they also will enrich the conversation in museums when they go out and become professionals. The field needs us now more than ever because we have to change and I think change begins with students coming out of this program. I remember going to the ASLH conference, I think it was in Rochester when I was in my second year, and somebody told one of the first year students uh, when she said, I'm just a first year student at Cooperstown, he said, no, you're a heavy hitter in training. And I thought that was a great phrase. I think the program is superb at cultivating each person's potential. And it is so publicly minded. And I think that each person gets such individual attention and such great mentoring that they truly develop into leaders in the field. And you see students that leave this program, they are confident, they know what they're doing, uh, they've got these great ideas, they definitely know that museums exist to serve their communities and serve the public. And that's what museums and that's what communities are looking for today. Always in dealing with these students, this has been a positive experience without exception for me because the students were, were, were very good and I always learned something and that's my key when I'm reading a thesis, whether I learn something or not. And I always do. The thing that's, that gives me hope is that these are the guys coming after us. They're the ones that are going to take museums into the next, the next life for an even broader audience than we could, than, be, than even we could imagine. So I want to wish all alumni and the faculty and staff of the program the happiest of 50th anniversaries. I'm so happy that there are 50 years of the Cooperstown program. I'm so proud that I was part of that so many years ago, that I was able to attend that program so many years ago. 50 more years, <laughs> because the field needs us. The field needs this program. We have a great relationship with the museum. We have a great relationship with the college. Um, and we have a terrific young faculty and staff. Um, and I think Cooperstown is well situated to go into the next 50 years um, and be and continue to be very successful. I want to revolutionize the museum field. Big dreams. My vision for my career, especially when it comes to museums, is addressing some of the challenges museums are facing, specifically how to cater to diverse audience. I want to work in development and administration of historic house museums to make them more accessible and more relevant to the communities around them. Growing up in Bed-Stuy, I didn't really, didn't really receive the quality, quality education that I should have gotten. And I, for my career, I really want to give children um, from rough neighborhoods a chance to get that education in museums. I want to help develop engaging museum programs that will help get more diver uh, wider and more diverse audiences interested in museums. So for what I want to do for my career now as a CGP graduate is I want to be in the museum field doing design work and also representing my tribe, the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. I want to work in administration in an institution that helps people and make the, makes the community a better place to live. I want to make museums fun and accessible for children of color. So my expectation for my career, um, career is to stay current with technology and hope, hopefully use the technology to connect with the audience and the, the museum. I'm interested in curating exhibits and looking at exhibit design and looking at how museums can use their collections to tell engaging and um, relevant stories. I would like to work in museums in an education program or maybe be a director of education and work on getting museums involved with schools to bring in teachers and students to learn about history from a different perspective. I really hope to diversify the museum field both through uh, museum staff and the audiences that museums cater to. 
Uh, I got into this field and uh, applied to this program because I love the way that museums have the ability to engage with the public in so many ways on so many different levels and uh, I would like to learn from that and bring that back to my home community, Detroit, and it's a city with great culture, great history, great people, and that's how I'd like to help them be on the rebound. Well, I, I aim to go into museum education and help viewers dig deeper into ideas and help them learn to think for themselves.